In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so ask the Lord to prepare us to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
loving servants. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
of an stick of women and a jolly cross. For do not have love. I am a resounding god or a crushing symbol. And if I take the book of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, <laughs> if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I will move both, but do not have love, I do nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, love is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not good. It does not seek its own interests. It is not good family. It does not look over anything, not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If comes, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. So faith, hope, <laughs> love for men, this three, for the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. <laughs> The seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Sister Agnes Maria Toynar, Sister Gabriella Maria Vianeri, my dear sisters, what do you ask of God and His Holy Church? I ask for God's merciful love and a share in the life of this religious community of the sisters of St. Felix of Countries. Well, first, again, my sisters, it is a privilege. Not only for myself, Father Jonathan, and then for all of us who are here gathered, it is a great privilege to be able to celebrate with you this day, this wonderful day. I uh, know that certainly today, you know, our prayers, your prayer, our prayers go with you as you journey forward. As you continue this prayer as members of this community. And, uh, again, as I say, we are all here be here with you today. Are you nervous? <laughs> if you are, you have a good company. <laughs> I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be at ease. No worries. Today, today, what you do, what you are taking part in, today is a celebration of love. It is a celebration of God. Your love for God, but also God's love for you. It is the day of love. And it's reflected in, it's a theme, if you will, that runs through the readings that you selected for this celebration. It is a reflection, it is an invitation, I should say, to reflect on love. Now, let me say this as a disclaimer that word love, I, I always hesitate to use. Not because, you know, Older, unemotional. I'm unemotional, but I may well be there. That word, that word, is trying to signify, <coughs> or it tries to embody for us in language a reality that is so powerful, that is so marvelous, that it's hard for us to, to, to be able to capture it. In that single word, love, right? Maybe it's the inadequacy of our language or the inadequacy of all language like to be able to capture what we mean when we speak of love. I think uh, one thing about love that comes to mind is it's a story that's found in Dostoevsky's novel, The Brothers Karamazov. <clears throat> in the very early part of the novel, a widow lady who goes to see uh, his character that he creates very vividly, Father Zosima, who is a a monk, and it was your spiritual direction and advice. The widow comes to see him and speaks to him about her lack of faith, and he encourages her that in order to grow in faith, she must engage in active love. And she said, well, you know, I have a hard time with that. When you say, love your neighbor, I, I, I love humanity. I'd be willing to do tremendous, amazing things, right, for humanity. It's the people around me that I have a hard time with. <laughs> Father Zosima says, active love, active love, which is what he calls it, is a harsh and fearful thing. Love and dreams, he said, would do amazing things. It would sell all its goods. It would even offer up its life, as long as it could do so in a very quick way and on stage for applause. But he said, active love is labor, and persistence, and to some, it is even silence. Active love is a harsh and dreadful thing. And in saying that, Dostoevsky is familiar, obviously, with one of the readings that he chose. St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the 13th chapter, where he tells us what love is. He spells it out for us. Love is patient, love is kind, love is forgiving. It hopes all things, believes all things, bears all things, endures all things. When Paul speaks of love, he's not talking about love in dreams. He's not talking about love in abstraction. He speaks of love as something very concrete 
put into practice each and every day, most particularly towards those that are around us, those who need help. That love, right, that love which is more than a feeling, right, that love is active, it's concrete, it's difficult sometimes, it is persistent, it is powerful, and it is transformative. We have a hint at the transformation, the power that this love that we speak of, but the, the transformation that it can affect. In that first reading from Isaiah, where Isaiah is speaking to a people who are exiled, right, to a city that is deserted, people forgotten, lost, right? He said, God loves you. God stirs you back to life. God loves you, and he uses a comparison. And he uses the comparison, right, of the love between spouses, bride and bridegroom, and says, this love is what God has for you. The love that you see embodied in day-to-day commitment and day-to-day life. God has that love for you. God will bring you back. God will restore you. God will give you a new life. That's powerful. It's hard to sum up that, right, in that one little word, love, and yet that is what we have, right? Love. A love embodied for us in Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave us his son. And Jesus didn't come down here, right, and have this nice, happy feeling. He had said nice things, warm things, beautiful things that can warm our heart, right? But Jesus walked our dusty roads. Jesus washed the feet, the dirty feet of his disciples. Jesus healed the sick by touching them. Those who were leprous, those who others shunned, and Jesus reached out to them with a healing hand. Jesus suffered and died on the fire. This was not just a flashing symbol, noisy dog, but it was God's And that's the implication that we respond to. Jesus sowed his love everywhere, the parable of the sower, right? As Jesus offers an interpretation for us in this passage from St. Matthew's Gospel, right, he speaks about how people receive it. And that's generally how we always look at the parable of the sower. It's how do we receive it? We certainly we hope we are the soil where the seed lands, right? The seed which is the word of God, but also most importantly the love of God, the presence of God, the life of God. We hope that we're that soil that receives it and bears fruit. And we hope that that's what we want. That. Jesus himself right, talks about that and offers that as an interpretation. We also should think about this. Is the parable of the sower is not just an exhortation for us, right, to be receptive to what God gives, right, but it's also an invitation for us first to think about the one who sowed. God, right, is amazingly prodigal. This sower who goes out throws his seed every which way in places where perhaps he would realize that it's not going to take root. And yet, nonetheless, God does that. God, in an extravagant way, sows love everywhere. Shares life everywhere. God is amazing in that. God is persistent. Doesn't give up, right? The sower sows the seed regardless. And if Jesus did that, Jesus continues to do that. Jesus then invites us to turn around and look and see because the parable of the sower is an invitation as well. Not just simply to receive the word, to receive the love, to receive the grace, and to take it in and bear fruit, right? But to ourselves, that we might also become sowers of the seed, sowers of the word, sowers of the love of God, sowers of God's life. And so God says to us, be generous. Grow your life, if you will. All over the place. Be persistent. Many times, right, that love that you share, the love of God, that life that you share, God's life, but also your life, your life, is always going to find a reception. Maybe it's only for a time. Maybe it's always. Sometimes works can seem fruitless. And yet we are commanded to imitate the sower and continue to sow the gardens. Where 
we, we have to follow in those footsteps. And of course, we also pray that we will be bearers of the fruit ourselves. That we will take it and be, be the, the good soil in which God's life and love finds rest and where it bears great fruit. A fruit that is lasting. That's what we all hope for. That's our great desire, right? Is to bear fruit that lasts. Right before being elected Pope, Benedict XVI had as dean of the Cardinal College, or the uh, dean of the College of Cardinal, the task of presiding at the Mass for the election of the Cardinal, and obviously, as well. And in it, he reflected on that idea about bearing lasting fruit in a poetic passage where he said, we have received the faith to give it to others. And we must bear fruit that abides. But what abides? Money does not last. Buildings do not last. Or books. After a certain time, more or less, all this disappears. The only thing that abides eternally is the human soul. The person created by God for eternity. That fruit abides. Therefore, is the one that we have sown in human souls. Love, knowledge, the gesture capable of touching the heart, the word that opens the soul to the joy of the Lord. So let us go and ask the Lord to help us to bear fruit, a fruit that abides. Only thus is the earth transformed from a veil of tears into a blood of God. Thank you, sisters, for your willing to go forth so the secret life that you're willing to take me and bear abide with you and thereby transform this world into that garden. God bless you. Dear sisters, by water and the Holy Spirit, you have already been consecrated with God's service. Are you resolved to unite yourself more closely to Him by a new bond of religious profession? In your desire to follow Christ perfectly, are you resolved to live chastity for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, to choose a life of poverty, and to offer the sacrifice of obedience? I am. May God Almighty grant you His grace. We fulfill what we resolve. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, look upon these, your serv these servants of yours who are resolved to dedicate their lives to you by making profession of the evangelical councils in the presence of your church today. Mercifully grant that their manner of life may bring glory to your name and further your loving plan of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hi, this is Agnes Maria Tona. Well, to online to that, just the parody of meetings for one year according to the Constitutions of the Sisters of St. Grace of Pantheus, and I promise to live according to the rule of the third order regular of St. Francis. I choose Jesus for my spouse and Lord, the Blessed Virgin Mary for my mother and lady, the Seraphic St. Francis for my mother of evangelical life, and this congregation for my family. I link my profession into the hands of Sister Mary Christopher, Provincial Minister, and I entrust my vows to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. By the authority entrusted to me, I receive your profession of vows in the name of God, the Church, and the Congregation. May the Lord grant me the grace to remain faithful to these vows.
If I promise you on the part of Almighty God in the name of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that if you observe all this, you shall receive life everlasting in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, Sister Gabriela Maria Vianelli, vow to Almighty God, chastity, poverty, and obedience for one year, according to the constitutions of the Sisters of St. Felix of Pantanichi, and I promise to live according to the rule of the third law of the regular of St. Francis. I choose Jesus for my spouse and Lord, the Blessed Virgin Mary for my mother and lady, the Seraphic St. Francis for my model of evangelical life, and this congregation for my family. I make my profession into the hands of Sister Mary Christopher, provincial minister, and I entrust my vows to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I have authority entrusted to you. I receive your profession of vows in the name of God, the Church, and the congregation. May the Lord grant you the grace to remain faithful to these vows. And I promise you on the part of Almighty God, in the name of the Blessed the Virgin Mary, that if you observe all this, you shall receive life everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive this veil, which proclaims that you belong entirely to Christ the Lord and are dedicated to the service of the church. Mm Receive this veil, which proclaims that you belong entirely to Christ the Lord and is dedicated to the service of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, giver of all good things, listen to our prayer. Bless and sanctify this crucifix, which is to be a reminder to these sisters of the love of your Son Jesus. Amen.
receive the role of St. Francis, let it truly be your book of life. Receive also the constitutions of this religious congregation, and love be for you a way of life for others in response to the gospel call of Christ. Like lamps lit by the eternal word, 
may we be true witnesses of the kingdom of God to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Torremo and Carolina Yanin, parents of Sister Gabriela Maria, and Maria Tromer, mother of Sister Agnes Maria, may our gracious God provide them with abundant blessings and graces. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of the Trona and Agnes families and friends of Sister Agnes Maria and Sister Gabriela Maria, present and absent this day, may God bless them always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased sisters and the late Jan Conard, father of Sister Agnes Maria, that the Lord shed eternal light upon them and may they rest within his love and embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for your abundant gifts, for your many blessings, for this outpouring of your love on us today. Help us always to faithfully respond to your love by sharing it with all those who we encounter through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Grant that the first fruits of your servants may be transformed by your grace into a plentiful harvest. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He is the unblemished flower who sprang from the root of the earth and declared the pure of heart blessing, teaching by his way of life the surpassing worth of chastity. He chose always to hold fast to what is pleasing to you. And becoming obedient for our sake, even until death, he willingly offered himself to you as a perfect and, and fragrant sacrifice. He consecrated to a fuller service of your majesty those who, for love of you, leave all earthly things and promised that they would find treasure in heaven. And so, for the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise it's without end in your claim. <laughs> Recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself. 
grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, the blessed spouse, with St. Francis, and St. Clair, St. Felix, St. Angela, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <coughs> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have given free will. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleased with you at their passing from this life, your kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, for whom we still in the world all of us. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Mm -hmm. Receive the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Christ, the light of the world, and enlighten us when you choose to be your apostles. Keep the flame of faith burning brightly in your hearts, so that they may spread your light throughout the world, that your kingdom may reign. And these sisters, set a flame with your body. Go forth and bring the message of your good news to all the world. Amen.
together with Sister Agnes Maria and Sister Gabriella Maria. So thank you for your presence. I know it is a great support for them as they continue their journey. And this evening at Vespers, they'll find out where the dean's mission is. So there's a little suspense also. Um, we would um, we would invite you to follow Sister Ambrose, and she'll lead you uh, to the um, to the reception. And we have to make it official. The sisters have to sign the book. We know we all witnessed it, but we need their signature. So, so we'll join you in a few minutes. <laughs>